Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Howard. Thank you so much. You know, the reason attorneys dress like this is that we want to appear like we can walk into the courtroom and lie to the judge convincingly, because that's what the clients want, you know? They sent me out here and they said, well, do about 12, 15 minutes, which, of course, translated to billable time means six hours. So. <laughs> I'd be here a little while. I'm probably the oldest comedian that's going to be on the stage tonight, so that means that this portion of the show will be eligible for Medicare reimbursement. <laughs> I found that a lot of my humor kind of appeals to an older crowd, and with two questions, I can basically tell how successful it's going to be tonight. So by round of applause, would you answer this question? If somebody asked you what time it is, round of applause, how many of you look at your watch? Okay. And how many of you look at your cell phone? I'm screwed. Okay. Uh, I, they do have a smartphone, but the problem is it's got a really dumb operator, so I, it didn't work. Uh, this is actually a really big crowd. There's a whole lot more people here than when I opened for the Mel Gibson Film Festival at the Jewish Community Center. <laughs> It's like three times as many people that showed up for the Chick-fil-A game right there, too. <laughs> I tell you, I got one of the worst agents in the world. Last week he calls me up, wants to book me for the Justin Bieber concert for the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Yeah, he, he knows I'm used to performing in front of really small audiences. My last gig was the Chicanos for Joe Arpaio rally. <laughs> What in a fancy place like this? Now, they just set up some bleachers in the parking lot at Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, I had actually had one of the hottest performances of my life, so I don't care what they tell you. Kevlar does not breathe like cotton. <laughs> but the white guy on the stage on the west side, everybody thinks is drive by target practice. <laughs> I thought they had more people there. They had payday loans as a corporate sponsor. <laughs> they were giving out coupons to reduce the interest rate to 73%. I know, it's like half off, right? A lot of people are kind of upset with Sheriff Joe, you know, because he goes around, he's arresting all the illegals. And you gotta admit, it sends kind of a mixed message. You know, we don't have the time to investigate sex crimes, but if you're here to cook our tacos or wash our cars, we will hunt you down and deport your ass. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff Joe. So, so it's been pretty dry around here lately, you know? No rain and all that. We're going to set a record. And I actually think that's a good thing, because have you noticed? Arizona drivers don't know how to drive in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Arizona drivers don't realize the difference between crossing a dry riverbed and whitewater rafting. <laughs> Arizona driver pulls up to a raging wash. His first inclination is to play, will it float? <laughs> Apparently this problem was so bad, the legislature had to pass a stupid motorist law, which is kind of like the pot calling the kettle black, right? <laughs> Any legislators out there? I wouldn't admit it either, okay. Now, I think they're coming at the problem from the wrong end. You gotta nip it in the bud. We gotta add one question to the driver's license exam. There'd be two questions, two, or two pictures. The question would be, which is the car, which is the boat? Solve the problem, right? Another thing I've noticed that in Arizona, every city around New Year's thinks it's New York City, right? So up in Flagstaff, they drop a giant pine cone off the Weatherford Hotel. Yeah, in Prescott, they dropped a giant boot off the Palace Bar and Saloon. This year in Scottsdale, they dropped a giant breast implant off the Pink Pony. <laughs> Nearly killed three people, I mean. Started a near riot when two gals wanted to take it home. You know? Cops came, they, they got busted. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they work, sometimes they suck like a presidential aide. Yeah. 
Come on, face it. Scottsdale's got more enlarged breasts per capita than a Tyson chicken farm, so. <laughs> but that went so well, I hear next year East Space is going to drop a double wide off the Mormon Temple. <laughs> Anyone here from Mesa? <laughs> nobody? Want, somebody met nobody? It's hard to get a babysitter when you have that many kids. <laughs> So I've been watching Downton Abbey and something interesting happened to me a few weeks ago. I was standing there and I got this tingling sensation in my loins. You know, and that doesn't happen to me very often because I'm married. <laughs> then I remembered I was at the airport. You know, that whole pat-down procedure's gotten from in the neighborhood up close and really personal. I don't know about you, I opt out of the scanning. I go for the pat down because the government tells us that the radiation from the scanning won't cause us any problem at all. These are the same guys that can't seem to grasp the concept that when you run out of money, you should stop spending. I don't believe it. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So we got problems in this country, you know, budget deficits, terrorism, health care. I got a solution. The TSA should hire proctologists to do the screenings at the airport. I mean, think about it. A physical is just a full-body cavity search with a copay. <laughs> We're going there anyway, you might as well check for polyps. I think it'd be great. You make one phone call, you could book a CNC, trip to Cancun, and a colonoscopy. All at once. Anybody out there had a colonoscopy? Yeah, I had one three years ago. I gotta tell you, the actual procedure is not that bad. It's the night before when they make you drink the 20 gallons of sludge remover. I was doing moves that would have embarrassed Miley Cyrus. I was running around faster than a kid taking a shower with the coaches from Penn State. Uh, too soon. I, uh, sure. A few years later, though, they actually did a study, and it turned out two chalupas, Taco Bell, Pretty much the same effect. Uh, I had a birthday not too long ago, and my age, you know what that means. Birthday sex. Now, you see, when you have sex, I think you need to adopt a specific strategy. And I know a lot of the young people these days have sort of adopted fast and furious. You know. My strategy is shock and awe. I drop my pants. And when the shock wears off, she says, uh. <laughs> so that night, I was getting pretty busy. It was late night in bed. I'm getting pretty excited and going along there. And I got to confess, something happened to me that has never happened before. She woke up. <laughs> she says, what in the hell are you doing? I had to think fast. I said, well, this is just part of the President's stimulus program. She said, well, I can totally see that. I said, really? She said, sure. It's not going to work, and it's going to cost you a whole lot of money. <laughs> so this is fun being here at Stand Up Live, my first night at this particular venue. It's a great place. And like all good comedy clubs, they get you in here with the promise of a big name headliner. Tonight we got Mac, uh, yeah, Matt Ritter, and you're going to love him. He's really good. I talked to him a little while ago. He's a really great comedian. And of course, like all good comedy clubs, once they got you in here, they put up some unknown hack to open the show. <laughs> See, now the job of the open. Thank you. The job of the open is to prove that the headliner is like 20 times funnier. About a half an hour, you're going to realize what a hell of a job I've been doing. <laughs> I don't want to say there's a major difference in the level of comedy, but Matt's a regular at the comedy store in L.A. Last month, I was at the Lost Dutchman RV Ranch in Apache Junction. <laughs> Open for Isaac the Magician. Yeah. So sit back, reduce your expectations, I'll try not to disappoint.
Now, I frequently perform with two other comedians, one of whom is an airline pilot, the other one's a used car salesman, and because I'm an attorney, when we get together, we call it the White Collar Comedy Crew. We thought that sounded better than two con men in a trunk. Back in 2005, we actually filmed one of our performances in Awatuki, which of course is another comedy mecca. <laughs> we turned it into a DVD, and the minimum order was a thousand. So I've got 897 of these things to sell. Thank God, Mom, up for a hundred, you know. Anyway, the deal is it's one for ten, or if you buy three. Get string them together, hang them out the back porch, scares away the birds. <laughs> now, I think it's really brave when people sit in the front row for a comedy show, because a lot of comedians pick on people. And when it's lawyers, they just pick on people for the hell of it, you know? Luckily, I don't do that. Not since the restraining order. <laughs> Wasn't my fault. I thought she looked like a gay guy in drag. Anyway. But you sat in front, so you get this for being brave. There we go. Right. I couldn't help you. Is it, are you with her, sir? Yeah. You owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> Cash and chip, either one. No, I just want to do a comedy. I try to get to travel all over the state. Uh, last month, Bruce Hepburn and I played the Assistant Living Center at Heber. We killed. The nursing home, you think they keep the paddles charged? Uh, <laughs> but I'm actually really happy with the way my comedy career has been going. In fact, last night I got a call. I'm going to Vegas. From what they tell me, the timeshare presentation only lasts for two hours. <laughs> you have been delightful. Enjoy the rest of the show. My name is Bob Howard.